In this micro lecture, we'll be discussing the anatomy of the heart. So let's look at the surface. So this is the front portion or the anterior view of the heart. This is a back portion or the posterior view of the heart. So let's look at the different structures. Here we have the right pulmonary artery. This we have the superior vena cava and the superior vena cava actually drains blood from the head, the neck, and the shoulder into the right atria. Let me get a pen so I can make sure that I mark here so you know what I'm talking. So this is the structure I'm talking about. This is the superior, superior vena cava. It dumps the blood into the right atrium. Then we have the inferior vena cava. The inferior vena cava drains the blood into the right atrium also. The blood that passes through the inferior vena cava comes from the lower extremities and then through the abdominal area, through the liver, and comes to the inferior vena cava. Here we have the aorta. And the aorta, the blood comes from the left ventricle. And we're going to show you another picture. Through the aorta that gives blood, oxygenated blood to the head, the neck, and then descend down to the rest of the body. This side, we have the left atrium. Here we have the left ventricle, and here is the right ventricle. I also want to show you that we have the left pulmonary artery. The left pulmonary artery, the blood from the right ventricle, actually drains the blood into the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery, this is one place you're going to see where artery is deoxygenated blood. So remember, the left pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary artery, this is deoxygen, deoxygenated blood that's inside these arteries. Now this, take the blood to the lungs, take the blood to the lungs area, and we, through the process of diffusion, we breathe off the carbon dioxide and we take in oxygen. Oxygen is then attached to the blood and it comes back via the pulmonary vein. And you're going to see that the pulmonary vein, which is this area right here, the pulmonary vein has oxygenated blood. So again, it's reversed because normally other areas of the body, artery is oxygenated blood and vein is deoxygenated blood. But in the heart, it's different. So it comes back via the pulmonary vein, dumps into the left atrium, and then after left atrium goes into the left ventricle and then out to the aorta. And we're going to show a much cleaner um, inside picture of the heart. So again, here is the back portion. This is a pulmonary artery, which we say have deoxygenated deoxygenated blood, we have two because one go to the left lung, one go to the right lung. Pulmonary vein that dumps the blood into the left atria, all right? So let's look at the layers of the heart. Let me clean this area off. So in terms of the layers of the heart, the heart is enclosed in a pericardial sac. It's like a thin layer that the heart is enclosed in. These are called, or it's called the pericardium sac, all right? But in that, there are multiple layers that makes up that sac. So we have the fibrous layer, we have the peritoneal pericardium, and then we have the visceral pericardium. Another name that they used to call the visceral pericardium is also called the epicardium outer layer. So this is a sac that the heart is enclosing. This is a visceral pericardium, also known as the epicardium layer. In between these layers, you will have this space, which is called the pericardial cavity. It has approximately five to 20 mLs of fluid in this area, which allow the muscle part or the heart itself to glide against the outer layer, which is a pericardial sac, right? So one of the things as we go into the lecture, you're gonna see if there's too much fluid, more than 20 mL that's accumulated inside here, then they can have cardiac tamponade. Okay. Then after the pericardium outer layer, then we have the myocardium, myo meaning the muscle of the heart. This is a middle layer. And then we have the endocardium. This is the inner layer of the heart, right? 
So again, keep in mind that when knowing the layer of the heart is very important because there are diseases such as pericarditis. So if it's a pericarditis, you know that it's talking about the outer layer. Talk about myocarditis, you know, it's talking about the muscle layer of the heart. All right. This is the tricuspid valve. And let me get my let me get my pen. This is the tricuspid valve, this white fibrous piece of um, structure here. It separates the atrium, right atrium from the right ventricle. Now, here's what occurs. The valve opened and allowed the blood from the atrium to go into the ventricle. And I wanna add in this time, the ventricle must be relaxed in order to receive the blood. Uh, this process is called diastolic, relaxation of the ventricle so it can receive the blood. When the ventricle contracts, it normally pushes the blood out to the pulmonary artery. Now, when the ventricle contracts, the tricuspid valve closes. Contraction is actually systolic, so know that. Relaxation is diastolic. Contraction is actually systolic, all right? In the opposite side, where you find the mitral valve, this again separates the left atrium from the left ventricle. Now, same concept, when the atrium contracts, the, the valve is gonna to open to drain the blood on the inside of the ventricle. When the ventricle contracts, then it sends the blood out to the aorta, to the neck and to the rest of the body. There are some other valves that are in place. There is the pulmonic valve, pulmonic valve, and there's also the aortic valve. Now the aortic valve is between the, a the aorta and the left ventricle. The pulmonic valve is between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery. So let's talk about the electrical conduction of the heart. So there's certain system that you should know. There is a SA node or here is the SA node in the right atrium, in the back of the right atrium. This is called the pacemaker of the heart. The rate for the SA node is 60 to 100 beats per minute in a resting state. And as you know, that the pulse rate, normal pulse rate is 60 to 100. So again, the SA node is considered a pacemaker of the heart. It is what initiate that impulse to start the contraction process. Then after the SA node ignite that electricity, then it goes to what we call the AV node, atrioventricular node. The AV, the AV node fires at 40 to 60 beats per minute. Now, if the SA node is not working for whatever reason that it's not working, then the AV node will pick up the electrical responsibility. But as you know, that it is lower than the SA node. Then the current is sent through what we call the bundle branches. We have the left bundle branch and we have the right bundle branch. Now, the rate for the bundle branches is 20 to 40 beats per minute. So if the SA node is not working and the AV node is not working, then you will see the bundle branches picking up the responsibility for the electrical conduction of the heart, which is 20 to 40 beats per minute. And if it's not working, the bundle branches, electricity is not working, then you'll have the, what we call the conduction pathway, which is less than 20 beats per minute. So this person will be a problem when it, if the electrical system within the heart is not working. Now let's look at the blood flow. And I mentioned it a little bit in the second slide. The superior vena cava drains the blood from the upper body. 
which is the head, the neck, and the shoulder, and the inferior vena cava drains the blood from the lower body. It dumps it into the right atrium. After dumping it in the right atrium, it goes through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. The right ventricle will contract and then push the blood through the pulmonic, the pulmonic valve into the pulmonary artery. After pushing the blood out to the pulmonary artery, one to the left lung, one to the right lung, we breathe off carbon dioxide and we pick up oxygen. So oxygen is then attached to the red blood cell and it comes back via pulmonary vein. And remember that I tell you that the pulmonary veins actually have oxygenated blood. So if you notice that there's four of them dump the blood into the left atrium, that blood then passes through the mitral valve, dumps it into the left ventricle. The left ventricle then pushes it out through the aortic valve, through the aorta. Of the, the blood goes to the head, the neck, and the upper part of the body. Then you will see where the descending aorta feeds the body with blood from the descending aorta. If you notice that the left ventricle is a little bit thicker than the right ventricle. And the reason why is because the contraction force, the left ventricle is responsible for pushing the blood so far out of the body, out of the head and the neck and the rest of the body. So you'll see that it is much more thicker. Look at the muscle area. This area is called the septum. It separates the left ventricle from the right ventricle. So let's look at the coronary artery. So I always say this, the blood that's inside the heart does not provide the nutrients and the oxygen within the heart. The blood have to come out. It is when it's coming out from the base of the aorta, because here's the aorta. So it's when it's coming off, you notice, look at this. You see the right coronary artery and you see the left coronary artery. So again, the blood that is inside the heart that is pumping from the, coming from the, from the left atrium to the ventricle, the blood within the heart does not supply. It's not until it's coming outside the heart that it branches off in the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery. So the right coronary artery supplies the blood to the right ventricle, to the right atrium, to the SA node, the AV node, which is used to regulate the heart. And then the left coronary artery, this actually descend off the, off the left coronary artery and supplies the blood to the front of the left side of the heart. So we have the circumflex artery branches off the left coronary artery. And it, what it does is encircles the heart muscle. And this artery supply blood to the outer side and back of the heart, all right? So if you can notice that the right coronary artery, that you have some arteries branching off. So understanding this and understanding which artery supply which side of the heart and where can give you an idea if someone should have a right coronary artery block, you know that's going to be a problem because then, especially to the left side of the heart, if the coronary block is right here, this is a huge problem because that means no blood supply is going anywhere. If the coronary artery is right here, then that means that blood supply will go to the other area, but then not to this front area of the heart. So again, understanding where the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery supply which area of the heart with blood will give you an understanding or a better understanding to know if someone has an MI and where it is, which part of the heart could be affected. So I hope this video was helpful. That you should have a quiz after this. Please stay tuned for the next video. Thank you for watching.